Okay, welcome to Chuvu. I'm Jacob, and today I'm going to show you what to do with a bunch of horse apples. What's a horse apple? Well, basically, it's apples that are intended for horses to eat. In other words, extremely cheap apples. <laughs> yeah, they're not really good for human consumption, but you can ferment the shit out of them and make a delicious session cider. So today I'm going to show you how to properly make pretty much a hard cider. I'm just going to use a soda stream to carbonate. I don't have a CO2 set up as yet, so a soda stream is fine. But the trick is, I've made my alcohol extra, extra strong. So this is, well, compared to my other stuff, not that strong. This particular batch right here is sitting at around 10% alcohol, maybe 11%, which as a session thing, that's a little bit too strong. That's almost like a sweet wine. But when you proof it down with soda water, you basically got a really elegant, okay, let's not say elegant, but a cheap solution to a hard cider. And let me tell you what, by adding this little delicious infuser in there, which is filled with mint and whatnot. Oh, mama tango. This is actually, th yeah, this is delicious. This tastes like, I guess, a macro cider or even a micro brewed cider. Like this is something that you could expect to get on tap at a pub. This is absolutely delicious, super cheap to make. So I'm gonna show you how to fucking do it. Oh, I, I love cider. I love apples, man. I live in apple country, so. I have to tell you what, that is actually very delicious. So here's cheers, and I'll show you how I did it. So I think the room... Uh oh, my missus just got home. Baby, baby, baby. get over here. I gotta get all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, quickly try this though, and I'll come give you a hand. What is it? This is my session cider. It's about 5%. Give that a go. Is it fizzy? Yeah, I've carbonated it with the thing. Just give it a taste. Don't be shy now. What do you reckon? If, if it's shit, just say it's good. Mm. Right? <laughs> it doesn't make you want to throw up immediately. No. So, and, and for us, that's a success. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a hand with the groceries. I'm going to keep doing this. So using eight kilos of the cheapest apples I could find, I boiled them in a big pot. Boiling them will get rid of any bugs. It'll also help break down some of that pectin, some of the fruit, and release those sugars, which will make it more accessible to the yeast. Once cooled, I poured it into a 20 liter fermenter. I just used a food safe bucket that I got from Bunnings and converted it into a fermenter. Try not to spill anything on the floor. I then dissolved four kilos of white sugar in some water and then added that to the fermenter, filling it up to around 19 or 20 liters, leaving a little bit of headspace because the apples will swell. Before adding the yeast, I like to do a gravity reading. This will help determine what my ABV, my alcohol by volume will be later on. Be sure to jot that down. Then I added some diamonium phosphate, which acts as a yeast nutrient, and some pectinase. Pectinase will help clarify and break down the pectin, again releasing those sugars and a lot more of those flavors. I'm using Mangrove Jack Cider Yeast, which is a good all-rounder, has some nice subtle flavors, and a very high alcohol tolerance, just like me. So the horse apple wine recipe is as follows. Eight kilos of horse apples, four kilos of white sugar, 15 grams of diamonium phosphate, nine grams of cider yeast, about nine grams of pectinase with a starting gravity of 1.132. This is in the description below and on our website. Well, it will be eventually. It's always a good idea to label your batches, especially if you have a lot on the go. I like to keep notes and I'll also write down a little thing on the thing, just so I know what thing is what thing. After two weeks or so, I decided to take another gravity reading to see where I'm at. Using an auto siphon to avoid adding too much oxygen to the batch, I filled up a container with about two liters of our horse apple wine. This is going to be good for today's session and I'll leave the rest to ferment on getting that alcohol even higher. By taking a second gravity reading, I can determine approximately what level of alcohol, alcohol by volume, is in this batch currently. This won't necessarily account for the fermentable sugars in the apples, so that's something that you have to consider. There's usually about 4 or 5% sugars that will be fermentable in fruit, so you can try to figure that out, but it's mostly minuscule. Now, I usually blow these things up, so... <laughs> Let's just fucking hope I don't do it this time. One more, fuck it. Okay. This is like a tea infuser. Now, basically, I get fresh mint. Oh, just stuff that in there, yeah, make sure you break it up. I'm also got mm, lemon verbena, just a single leaf, which is really nice. And of course, my go-to golden sage. Stuff that in there. Boom. Ah, that'll stop it getting in all your yuckies. It looks like a weird little something surgical. I won't go into detail of what that reminds me of. 
Mm, look at it go. So this has stabilized at around 10%, not counting the fermentable sugars in the apple, which wouldn't put it up too much, maybe 1% more, if that. And there's way more sugar in there than I would like. So that is what I like to do, make a really almost sickly sweet. You're also making a very high alcohol cordial, and then you can proof it down with your soda water or whatever you'd like, and that way it's less sweet, less alcoholic, and you've got yourself a good session horse apple wine, or in this case, it's now basically become a hard cider. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, that is... That is really nice. It's still very sweet, so you wouldn't want to have too many of these because it's like, you know, your teeth might fall out, but... Oh, now that's probably too sweet for me. But I bet you anyone who likes cider, the sweet stuff, would absolutely love this. Basically, I just got my two liters here that I took out. I then let the main batch, that's fermenting onwards. So I stabilized this, then my 20 liter batch, I topped it back up. That's gonna ferment all the way through. I imagine that'll get to 19% alcohol. <laughs> but then again, you proof it down with your soda stream. Just off the top of my head, this has probably gone from 10% to 5%. I mean, it's pretty straightforward maths. It's 10% alcohol. I've halved it with soda water, which has no alcohol. So you're sitting there at about 5%. Now you have a session cider that you can sit on without getting absolutely blotto, unless you, you're gonna do what I'm gonna do, which is probably sit here on this chair the rest of the afternoon. So, mm, oh, that is, that's delicious now. That, so because I added that soda water, that's probably around 4%. I'm just fucking throwing these figures out there. I don't know. So pretty much we live in apple country, the Adelaide Hills. There's just apples everywhere, tons of orchards. And towards the end of apple season, as the colder months start rolling in, winter rolls around, there's just a ton of apples left over, right? So they sell them in these giant bags and they call them horse apples. Now it sounds a bit gross, but really what it is, it's just bags that are intended for horses. Now I don't really care for horses. It just seems like everyone in their mums is packing a horse around here. Anyway, what I was saying was I don't really care for horses and it's probably because I got bitten on the knee by a horse when I was traveling through Mongolia, but I don't know. Anyway, look, they're just, they're not for me. But anyway, I can't really afford a horse, but what I can afford is apples that were intended for horses, which I instead bought and turned into delicious booze. So that's what we've done today. Yeah, I'm a fan of this uh, because it's really, really, really easy to make and super, super cheap and very delicious. Like this is almost store-bought quality, I guess. Yeah. But it's young, so if you let that age. It almost tastes like a Lobo's or a Hillsider. Yeah, exactly, right? It definitely has that organic cloudiness to it. Mm. But again, that's because this is very, very young. If you were to do this properly, I would rack again, cold crash it so that all the yeast will settle, then rack that out into my mouth. And that'd be, and then spit that back into the bottle. Yeah. Then sell it off to the plebs. Churu.com, grab a bottle today. Did you write a song for this one? Oh, I have to do a song. Oh, shit, okay. No, I better do that now. I'll write one, I'll be, I'll be back with a song. aforementioned little trees happiness and glee but this doesn't really make sense because trees aren't sentient only hippies believe in that nonsense i've been jacob Brubauer, and you've been watching churu god bless and good night also there is no god <laughs> no, just, just, i can't say that okay believe what you want to believe just watch churu and eat healthy food that's the plan and drink this wine is that a good sign off message to the one follower who follows us mum mum here's to you mum Oh, we've also got um, Aaron's kids. Oh, Aaron's kids. I don't think they should be watching How to Brew Alcohol. No, not yet. <laughs>